So my area of research broadly is uh, what we call extreme states with extreme light or ultra high intensity physics. So what we do is that we have this uh, ultra short bursts of light, very, very small bursts of light, which are very highly powerful because of their short duration. And these are focused onto a piece of matter and it creates extreme conditions of temperature and pressure and density there, which actually mimic conditions inside an astrophysical object. You can create conditions on this earth in an earthbound lab, which actually mimic the interstellar conditions. And some of the work that's, that's been recognized has to do with the fact that we have found uh, ultra large magnetic fields, what we call as the giant magnetic fields. These are a, almost a billion times larger than the magnetic field of the earth. And these magnetic fields evolve into a turbulent state inside a star, inside the sun for example. And we can now capture signatures of this evolving turbulence in a lab based experiments with an ultra short pulse uh, in high intensity laser. So that's one thing that's been uh, cited. And the other thing is that uh, there are certain uh, flows in this plasma that we create with this laser. You know, everything evolves into a plasma state where everything is ionized, the matter is completely ionized. And there are certain typical flows in this plasma which produce ultra high uh, frequency acoustics going all the way up to terahertz. And we discovered an analog of this, that there's an instability in the accretion instability in the supernova, whereby you can produce this ultra high uh, frequency oscillations, which are known as terahertz acoustics. I would say that the applications are in a number of areas. Uh, I would say the next generation accelerators, the next generation radiation sources, and the next generation, I would just put it as particle beams, uh, whether whatever the particle may be will all be probably driven by uh, high intensity femtosecond lasers. You might wonder all these are still you know technology, cutting edge technology, but what does the common man benefit? So if you see in the last 10 years, people have been trying to use ion beams that have been generated by a high intensity femtosecond laser for cancer therapy, right? Because the protons that are produced by this laser uh, can be very good tools to actually kill cancer cells right at the place where the cancer is developing. The proton beams have this wonderful property that they can deposit energy right at the depth at which you want. And uh, so I would say the many times the applications are, so we have the sources, the applications are waiting to be discovered. And I would say that the future is in more ways than one extremely bright. So if you ask me whether I had known that I would work with lasers, my honest answer would have to be that I had absolutely no idea. Uh, when I walked into IIT Kanpur, I was assigned to a professor who was looking for a student to work on lasers. So I started learning about lasers, I started learning about nonlinear optics. And at some point of time, I was fascinated with this uh, whole idea of matter behaving very differently as you tune the intensities to higher and higher levels. And that's been an affair uh, with light. But it's also been a long affair for me for the last 25, 30 years. It's been one unexpected, but still a very, very exciting journey. The interesting thing is that when we also uh, emerged as a group, we had people who again thought, what are these guys up to? Why are they doing this? This is a field that's been uh, the traditional playing ground for the richest possible labs in the world. So these are labs which have huge lasers, which have huge teams of people and a lot of money. So, but fortunately the technology had changed and the lasers became compactified. And then we said, wow, so we can have these wonderful lasers now. So what is it that we can do? We found that in this little corner of Mumbai, we've been able to attack problems that most other people had overlooked. And as it turned out, that these are problems that people had no answers to. And we were amazed if a decade later that people were appreciating the kind of things that were coming out of this lab. It's extremely important for India to do a lot of experimental science. And this is something I can say, I mean, I say with a lot of passion, uh, because Indian students generally tend to be a lot theoretical. They are not really interested in uh, handling the challenges you know, that come with experimental science. Experimental science 
needs uh, a lot of motivation it needs a lot of can do spirit it needs passion it needs a tremendous amount of patience and it needs uh, an ability to interface with lots of things and the biggest thing is persistence if you don't do good experimental science there is no good technology india will not develop its own technologies india will not become competent in several core areas if you don't do a lot of experiments and uh, for india particularly this is a defining moment if you ask me so because i do believe that uh, make in india will not happen if you don't do great experimental science right here right now the infosys prize is um, it's huge in its impact i think the biggest thing is that it it seeks to challenge people to do the biggest thing that they can the infosys prize because of the kind of uh, jury that you have that this is now looked at as uh, one of those very very coveted recognitions uh, by your peers and so in a sense the infosys prize is hugely enabling it opens many many doors but it's also hugely challenging